eyes, or her eyes, or their eyes. And how she whispered. Yes, Jack. Or. Yes, William. Or. Yes, Aliphalet. As the case might have been. <laughs> or just plain. Yes. And how he, with the extraness gained by many rehearsals, gathered her into his arms and printed a kiss on her brow. Or her cheek. Or her hair. Or behind her ear. <laughs> but only in the rare instances on her lips. Ew! And how the happy couple, now forever united, until the next performance, stood looking out over the footlights, estimating the box office seats and the amount of paper in the house until the curtain fell, and the thoughts of the audience turned to the internet. And then, what happens next? There are inquisitive souls who ask this question. Will they live happily ever after, or will the matrimonial part encounter one of the many obstacles which somehow have been forgotten? The dramatist, looking upon marriage, or its forerunner, engagement, as the end of all things, neglects to tell us. Starting with a variable number of eligible young persons of opposite sex, he has paired them off in such combinations as his experience tells him will be pleasing to the magnate who produces the play, to the temperamental ladies and gentlemen who condescend to act in it, and last, and most importantly, to that source from which our royalties flow, that unaccountable, irresponsible, conscienceless creature, the audience. <laughs> to the very portals of marriage he travels with his charges, but there he leaves them to act as friend, philosopher, and guide to others following in their footsteps. And then, perhaps they didn't all have happily ever after. Perhaps she is extravagant. He smokes in the parlor. Or he repents his rashness in her panting bachelorhood, and she reflects, as his faults can become plain, that she could have done better. And they do not increase and multiply, and are unhappy. And so come to furnish material for yet another play. But of the time between, of the time immediately after she has said yes, and before she has begun to say no. Millie! Jack! So, so you're really going to marry me? Yes, Jack. Isn't it wonderful to think that we two, just we two? Come, we have so much to say to each other. Isn't that so? Are you comfortable, dear? Perfectly, perfectly. Jack. Yes? Now that we are alone, we are alone, aren't we? Of course. There's one thing that I want you to tell me. Yes, dear? Jack, when did you begin to love me? When I began to love you? Yes. Well... Yes? I think it's the first time I met you. Uh, Jack! <laughs> you don't mean that. I'm quite sure. It was in December, a year ago. What? Just after Christmas. First time I met you, it was long before that. Was it? Don't you remember? It was at Barton's house party, Jack. Barton's house party. So it was. And then the second time. <laughs> when was it, Jack? The second time. Yes. The time after Barton's. Yes, Jack. Don't you know? Of course I know! <laughs> you don't mean to say that you forgot that also? I'm sorry. Sorry? I'm absent-minded, you know. And you loved me from the first time we met. Oh! And I thought everything would be so different! Now, Millie, don't get angry. I'm not angry, Jack. I'm <laughs> hurt. Just hurt. I made a mistake. That's all. I thought the first time was later on. In December? Yes. Where? Eh? Where in December did we meet, Jack? Just after Christmas. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, well? At Phelps. It was at Phelps. You see, I know. Am I right? Uh, yes, Jack. That was the time. Father was there, too. He made a hit with him. Come and come together, he said. Jack, that's an awfully nice young woman. I'd like you to get to know her better. He said that about me? Why, that wasn't a marker, just the things he said. You see, Father's been wanting me to get married off for some time now. Uh, oh, um... I haven't said anything wrong, have I? Wrong? Oh, no, it's go on, Jack. Look here, I'm not offending you. Offending me? We haven't been engaged for an hour. 
Father told me to be careful about what I said tonight. With your future wife, Jack, careful? He said if I was in any doubt, I should talk about it. Oh. Well, go on, Jack. What? Talk about him. Oh, Father's a great man. You know that. Everybody knows it, Jack. Of course. Father owns the biggest department store in town. Why, he started the department store idea. There were no department stores before Father. How intensely grueling. His first store. Have you seen a picture of it? No. Why, it wasn't even as large as this room. And today, there are more than 3,000 people with Forex Incorporated. Father has to have someone carry on the business for him. And it breaks his heart to go to the family. He wants me to go into his business. And is that why he wants you marry? Indirectly, yes. I don't understand you. See, a man is so much steadier when he has a wife. Yes. Well, I have to be going. Already? Father's waiting. What do you mean? You want to know what happened. What happened? <laughs> Whether you said yes or no. Oh, so he knew you were going to tell me? Of course. You told him? Well, You I had the art! <laughs> Or perhaps he told you. Come, yes, sir. Well, he said, if you have an acid trip before morning. Yes? He said, you can go to work for $10 a week. So you asked her? What do you think? And you knew she had said. Well, well, I wasn't sure. No. But father was. You face! Oh! I haven't offended you again, have I? Offended me? Ha! Huh. It's only my way of talking. I don't mean anything by it. No, I didn't think so. No, Millie! Oh, 